The Wall Street Journal report reveals a Russian-American businessman may be the source of that salacious but unverified material in the 35-page Trump dossier famously published by BuzzFeed News. The story claims that Trump had been co-opted by Russian intelligence. It hardly improves the document's reliability to have its claims come from a businessman instead of intelligence sources. It's one of many questions about the dossier. So why did BuzzFeed publish it in the first place? Well, joining us now is Ben Smith. He's the editor-in-chief of BuzzFeed News, and he's defended the document's publication in the New York Times op-ed this week, saying that instead of only presenting known facts, BuzzFeed left it to readers to, quote, reckon with a messy, sometimes uncertain reality. Ben joins us from New York. Ben, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me on, Tucker. So I know you've taken a lot of flack for this. Let me just ask the obvious question, which is, let's say I had an unverified document given to me by one of your enemies claiming that you had committed a sex crime. And let's say that document was in the hands of law enforcement, but they had not pressed charges against you. Let's say I had no evidence at all that it was true, but I did know that releasing it would gravely damage your reputation. Should I release it? Let me praise it another way. Of course, I would never publish that because it would be unfair. You're, How you're just that asking questions, Tucker. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, I um, am. The, uh, I think, yeah, I think that's actually a great way to frame it and a great question. I, and I, I really appreciate your having me on because I, I think having watched this show a bit that we do not agree on this, but I appreciate the opportunity to kind of make my case to your audience. And I think that's a good way to look at it. I think that would be, a, you, sh you should not publish that document if you, if you have it. I think if it was briefed to the President of the United States, if it was the, if, if Senator, members of the Senate were sending out press releases making kind of dark intimations about it, but not saying it, and then, and then, and then it was reported that there was a document that as you described, it referred to certain crimes, but that we're not going to show you the document. I think I would probably say, I think this is BS, but show them the document but, and, and, let, and let people see the thing that is being referred to. And that's, that's certainly how we made our decision. You, you know, obviously, if you, if you look at my at replies on Twitter right now, right. you can probably see people making allegations like that about, you know, about me and you right now all day, every day. And I think most consumers of information right now realize that the egg avatar may not, you know, may not speak the truth, but I think between the egg avatar and something that you have absolutely that you have nailed down is and has always actually been in American journalism and in American politics information that is being fought over at the highest levels of journalism of right. politics and I think there are reasonable arguments I mean I think in a way you know Matt Drudge made these just sort of like made these decisions about Monica Lewinsky years ago at well, what sure point do you say this document that is being fought over that and that by the way everybody except the public in a certain sense has seen we've seen you know, and we don't have any special powers. At what right. point do you, does the audience say, you know, we can, we can see this too and we can deal with the fact that it is okay. clearly labeled as unverified, that it's clearly labeled that some things in it aren't true, which is what we did. I, I, I kind of get it. I mean, so what you're saying is because famous people are gossiping about it, and because other famous news organizations... people, the president of the United States, the president sure. elect, a, and the intelligence a, 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 agencies, a, a, a we're not just talking the, they, they, variety, famous people. Trust me, they, they, they gossip too. And by the way, let me just note <laughs> not gossip, that the official briefing, a document what, that, by the way, is a public document subject to the freedom of information law. Well, actually, in some sense, it's gossip because it's unverified. And the difference between what you did and what Drudge did was what Drudge reported turned out to be true, whereas it looks like what you reported is not true. But let me just ask this: this is not without precedent, as you're suggesting. We hear stuff like this all the time. Eight years ago, there was some guy in Chicago who claimed to have committed creepy and illegal acts with then Senator I Barack remember Obama. That guy. Well, exactly right. And he went and filed a sworn statement with the police department. Law enforcement Le was Larry involved. Larry Sinclair, I believe, that's right? Ex that's exactly right. Yes. And most of us chose not to repeat those charges because we didn't want to amplify them because we didn't know if they were true. And by repeating them, we would do grave damage to a man's reputation, in this case, Obama, who I'd never liked. But I just thought it was unfair to report that. I think that you is just a, don't like Trump. That's I think the those early Obama allegations that he was a Muslim, that this particularly crazy thing you refer to, and then later the questions about his birth certificate, they aren't exactly the same, right? Because they weren't secret. They were out there. In some way, like people were already hearing them. So it's not a secret document. But in a way, it is an analogy, I think, because I think for reporters who come from you know, a traditional newspaper background, I think like both of us, the instinct is what you just said. Don't go spreading, don't, you know, that if somebody hasn't heard this before, why would you tell them? I think we've moved into a different moment when what we found, what I remember what I found when I was covering Iowa in 2007, 2008, was that all the voters had heard this stuff. You know, whether it was on the internet or on talk radio or somewhere else, that we were being too squeamish to refer to, and that right. my decision around things like 
the Larry Sinclair thing was to was to write about it, was to say this seems totally insane, and here are a bunch of reasons to think it's insane. But I'm not going to do the clean hands thing of saying I won't touch it. And I think that was appropriate with the Muslim stuff. I think it was appropriate when Donald Trump started talking about the birth certificate that the media didn't say we're going to clip, we're going to cut that portion of what he said because it's crazy. They said, and here's all the reasons it's nonsense. But we are in fact going to restate the claim. I don't think that's an exact parallel, but I do think we're living in this world where there's tons of unverified information, where and where the, we have to figure out ways to help our audience navigate and reckon with that rather than but, just to but, ignore it. But, but I mean, just in point of fact, I don't think I'm going to convince you, you didn't actually help them navigate it. You just printed it and said, it may or may not be true, here it is. But here's what bothers me about your explanation, okay? I, I think you make some smart points. I'm for openness. I'm for transparency. But by setting yourself up as a champion of press freedom, you're being slightly disingenuous because there, there is a political component here. And, and I want to refer you to something from BuzzFeed's editorial standard, which is, is online, and I, and I read it, and here's what it said, and I'm quoting. We firmly believe that for a number of issues, including civil rights, anti-racism, LGBT equality, there are not two sides. Now, it struck me really as almost a theological statement, not a statement of journalism, which presumes there's always another side. There's always another voice to be heard. There's always a different perspective. You're saying there isn't, and anyone who disagrees should be ignored. That's, that's a statement of activism, isn't it? Absolutely not. I think that's actually, I mean, I, I doubt that Fox News has a view that there are two sides on whether you should be racist or not. I mean, and I think that, I think that's in some sense a state that it, a lot of news organizations don't put out that, that like, don't, don't make explicit that implicit point that you don't, that you, that you're not going to cover <laughs> racists like they're, like they have a, re, a legitimate point of view. I, I don't really no, see why that's particularly picking, controversial. No, because you're picking but the I most ludicrous really example. Wait, 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 to this. I'll tell you exactly how, because clearly BuzzFeed News has a pretty open political agenda masquerading as journalism. Now, uh, let's get Wait, very is it specific. Open or is it masquerading? Well, it is open and obvious to those of us who care to pay attention. I think you are hiding behind uh, what appear to be journalistic standards when, in fact, they're political imperatives. And I'll give you a great example. So the day the Supreme Court ruled on gay marriage, so it was June of 2015, you wrote this, and I'm quoting, the Supreme Court ruling today, astonishing to me as much as we all knew it was coming, marks the end, more or less, of a story that has helped define BuzzFeed as we've grown, and I'm quoting, and one that we should be proud of playing a big part in. That sounds like a press release from a political action committee. It doesn't sound like something a journalist would write. You're no, taking was, sides. What, I, what I was saying there was that we covered the hell out of that story. We took marriage seriously before we thought it was a story. And Chris Geidner, who broke news all over the place, who I think if you talk to advocates on either side, will say was a smart, fair reporter. Was, was we were this a central voice on a big story. You know, I think it's interesting. I think that you can, that we've covered these stories extremely fairly. And I think I would, in fact, refer you to, um, there was a moment a couple of years ago when our, a reporter of ours who covers international gay rights and the kind of global traditionalist backlash against them got tossed out of a Vatican, um, a Vatican gathering. I got barred from it because uh, for whatever reason. And, and a guy named Steve Bannon wrote a tirade on Breitbart.com demanding that he be admitted because he was the reporter who had covered this very fairly. So, I mean, okay, so I went back to your first point. You said, how could anybody think that racism is legitimate? And obviously, I'm not for racism. I don't know anyone who is. So uh, that was an editorial honest. statement that you just made, and a totally obvious, uncontroversial one. Okay. But I don't well, even I consider wanna, that particularly wanna, political, do you? Well, I want to compare the product against the claim. So this your claim is there's no other side to racism. So um, here are some recent BuzzFeed articles. Here are the headlines. Um, 17 foods white people have ruined. White people are a plague to the planet. 21 things white people ruined in 2015. 29 things white people ruined. 36 pe white people who so need to be stopped. So many things, my God. Join the less. revolution, stop the white people. Now, I know this is like a sort of cutesy Brooklyn way of demonstrating you're not uh, racist Brooklyn? by attacking white people. Don't blame Brooklyn for this. Um, <laughs> I, my, my this point is, is a joke, and this is, you being, this, is, this is you being humorless, which I feel like is a thing that Fox Nothing. News is not like known for is, is saying that like well, I'm not if we're refusing humorous. to take a joke and f taking a joke well, and making it as not, serious hold as on. possible. No, hold on. Let's so that is, that is how these movies were attended. And I'm really I, I sorry that you were offended by you're, them, Tucker. You're Genuinely. not a comedian. You don't get to retreat into comedian mode and say, Actually, oh, I'm I think, just kidding. This, this was I'm also not straight was, report. This, was not, this wasn't part of BuzzFeed News. BuzzFeed okay, does news. BuzzFeed does entertainment. And that's what that actually was. Let me ask you something that is. Recently, a year or so ago, you had an open position for a journalism fellowship. And before you understood that your practices were barred by employment law, you opened it only to journalists of color. You barred people from that job on the basis of the color of their skin. Now, if that's not the textbook definition of racism, then maybe you can re-educate me as to what racism means. But that we had a journalism fellowship that was aimed at people of color. I think that many no, but it many media people companies, who were the wrong color. That many, I'm asking that, about you, not many media companies. Right, no, I you. understand. I think that there's a, and obviously I think lots of, 
companies try to recruit a diverse workforce, and certainly including News Corp, including BuzzFeed, including many others. There are also very clear legal restrictions around how exactly you can go about recruiting that diverse uh, workforce. You, you One bumped of the things up you can, against those in the end, but and you advertised full -time it. And jobs, as a, rather than part-time okay. fellowships, you cannot make okay, explicit, and we you walked You learned all that. Oh, hold on. The law stopped you from doing what you tried to do, which was exclude people from the job, on the basis of their skin color. And I'm asking you a straightforward question. I'm sorry if I'm being humorless about it. No, this one why is not. Is that, you know, this, I'm not suggesting what, you're being why, humorless. Why here. is that not textbook racism? I grew up learning if you exclude people from a job because of the way they look, their skin color, something over which they have no control, racism. Why is that not racist what you did? I mean, I understand that like, there's a broad debate over affirmative action and that no, it's a specific in some debate about what you did. As Explain racism. why that's not racist. And I think yeah. that, I, mean, I, I guess I don't think that recruiting, tr trying to recruit, bring on a diverse workforce is that, but I, and I don't really think you think that either. So no, no, I guess I'm, I'm not, not really sure. About, I'm not talking about airy generalities about recruiting a diverse workforce. Obviously, I'm for that. Right, you're talking about a specific I'm talking fellowship specifically that we about offered. barring people on the basis of their skin color from a job. It's really clear. Why is that not racism? The law says it is. You didn't think it was. I mean, ethically. Why is that okay f with you? I mean, I guess I think that, there are, that, recruit, that trying to recruit a diverse workforce is something that inevitably, Come and on. I think in the, all the big a, affirmative action Let's cases, I'm, the buzzwords. Like, why is that okay? I, I think that in all the big affirmative action cases, right, there's, a very, there's an argument about are people, does that, does, does bringing in people of one group mean that there are other people getting excluded? I mean, I think these are interesting, legitimate arguments well, that, the Supreme Court, <laughs> that the Supreme Court has weighed in on. There is tons of complicated law on. And this You're was better in that than this. Context. Just give me a straight answer. It's, it was okay with you. You don't see that as racist, okay? You just don't, I no, guess, don't see right? That. I do not see that as racist. Correct. Wow. All right, let's have lunch and kind of hammer out the definition. Thanks a lot. Look forward ben to Smith. it. Great to see you.